So we are here at the Columbia Street Food Truck Festival, which I love, by the way. Um, and this is put on by Downtown New West BIA. And I'm sitting here with Brian Hughes. Um, and you are owner of Game Deals and Pandora's Box, correct? Uh, Pandora's Locks. Pandora's Locks, wow. I, I always think just Pandora's Box, <laughs> apparently. It is a play on words. <laughs> it is. OK, can you tell us a little bit more about you? About me? Oh. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I started Game Deals here about 13 years ago after being at the flea market. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then three years ago, we opened Pandora's Locks. So now I've got the two businesses here. I also run the Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo. And I'm also on the board of directors of the Downtown New West BIA. Right. Wow. Yeah. So you kind of do a little bit of everything. I have a bunch of stuff going on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and so how, you know, being a part of, you know, this area in Downtown New West and as a member of BIA, um, what, what kind of does that entail for you? What do you mean? Uh, responsibilities or, you know, when these uh, events happen, does that mean anything for you as a member? Like, does that require you to do anything? I mean, we always have a setup when we do events like this. Mm -hmm. um, most of the BIA stuff is organized with Kendra and her team. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of, uh, you know, help to facilitate the direction of the bigger picture stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, down here, you know, we just have a lot of business coming in, and we usually set up a little thing out on the street here and talk to people and yeah. have a good time, right? Because that's kind of what it's about, right? Yeah. yeah. I like this event. Lots of good food. Yes, <laughs> the food. Oh, my God. Can you tell yeah. me, like, is there a favorite spot for you? Oh, frying pan. Yeah? Yeah. Every, every year I start with frying pan, and then I end with the Slavic rolls, and then sometimes I'll get something different in the middle. Yeah. So, oh. Have yeah. you tried uh, the Big Star uh, sandwich? Yeah, big, you have. big stars down the street. Okay, that's, that's great. Yeah. No, definitely. Well, that's yeah. kind of who we'll be kind of trying out here um, in a little bit. But so you, sorry, you said you started Game Deals Thir 13 years 13 ago. 13 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Um, did you start, but it wasn't together with Pandora's Locks. No. Um, did Pandora's Locks, I, it's, I feel like I've, it's been kind of a little bit of a, a new thing uh, coming around with all these. Uh, uh, escape rooms and that mm -hmm. it has that have you seen that increase in it definitely okay so I originally was looking at the escape room industry when it was still first starting and there were none here mm -hmm. and then uh, you know we had a death in the family kind of got sidetracked forgot about it and then a couple other places started opening and at that point I ended up getting sidetracked running different events and things for a couple years and finally when it got to the point where I was looking for something new. I was like, okay, let's reassess this escape room thing. Now that there's a couple open, let's check where the industry's at. And I took a good look at it and uh, realized that, you know, not having first mover advantage was a problem, mm -hmm. but being able to learn from the three years experience from everyone else, as well as all the compiled information from owners around the world was immensely helpful in giving us kind of a jump start to, okay, here's where the industry's at. Now, how do we take it the next step? Right. So, Okay. Yeah. How how different is, you know, running Game Deals and Pandora's Locks? They're two very different businesses. Yeah. I mean, Game Deals is, you know, nostalgia, retro games. Lots of people coming in saying, oh, I grew up with this and I want to play it again. A lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah. And collectors that want to build collections of things. Right. Uh, whereas with Pandora's, it's, it's an experience. You know, people want to come in and have a, an adventure. They want to, you know, like... One of the comments I like is it's not about escaping the room, it's about escaping everything outside the room. Right, right? yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of more like going to the movies or playing laser tag or something yeah. like that. It's like, I don't, want to I don't want to think about reality for a little while. I want yeah. to go and have an experience that's different, that's an adventure. Yeah, so. oh, okay. How many people actually uh, get to escape? <laughs> right now, I think the escape rate's about 30%. Okay, so. oh, not that high. Yeah. <laughs> but even then, like, escape, it's not even about the escape. Most yeah. of them aren't... Most of them aren't about escapes. It's more about do you get the good ending or the bad ending. Mm. You know, we're very adamant that everybody needs to get an ending. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, with, with game deals, you know, being part of, of all these video games, do you, do you play? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. um, I have to say, I, growing up, I didn't particularly play until my brother was born. And, mm. of course, you know, as a boy, and he, he wanted video <laughs> games, and he didn't have anyone to play with. So it, it became like, you know, the older sister sitting there playing. Um, but now, I, I have to say, like, looking back, like you said, mm -hmm. it, it's that nostalgia. I'm like, oh, Sega, oh, this, you know, it's that kind of thing. So it's interesting. Um, do you find that, I don't know, do you find that people purchase more now over, like, for nostalgic reasons or as the new 
like a new thing. I think we're starting to see less people purchasing new games because mm -hmm. more of those people are going digital. Right. Um, and we're definitely seeing a bigger collection of the older stuff, especially with YouTube, is mm -hmm. introducing newer young people to these old games. Yeah. And a lot of the people that, you know, I mean, they could play them digitally in different ways, but a lot of them still want to own it. They still right. want to, you know, look, touch, and feel this cartridge and put it on a shelf and be like, here's a thing I own, as opposed to here's a thing I downloaded. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, I hear a lot about um, video games, older vi video games becoming very expensive because they become mm -hmm. collectibles and that. Um, how expensive can a video game get? They can get pretty expensive. I mean, there's not very many that are hideously expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the most of the really popular ones tend to cap out in the hundreds. It's it's rare that you get a game that goes into the thousands. Okay. And then there's always those few exceptions of like you know stadium events or gold Nintendo World Championship cards and stuff. But those are kind of the outliers. That kind right. of stuff doesn't happen often, and it's usually between high level collectors. Most stores don't see that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, and. Since you've been here on, uh, in New West, have you seen many changes? Absolutely. Yeah? Oh, yeah. What's like a major change? It's, it's getting nicer. Yeah? Yeah. There was, there was a lot of, um, you know, it, just, it, felt, it felt old, and it definitely had that historic feel. Right. And I think some of the historic feel has been retained, but there's definitely new life being breathed into the city. A lot of new buildings going up, a lot of new people, especially if you go down to Fridays on Front and you see, like you look around, it's like these are the people in our neighborhood now. Right, you know, yeah. It's different now. We're starting to get a lot of new businesses that are catering to these people that you know, are like, hey, we got a new place to drink, a new place to eat. <laughs> look at all these fun new shops opening up. Yeah. Like, it just seems like New West is becoming the cool place. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, like, and I, try to, I try to explain to people why I like it here because I live a block away from here too. Oh, okay. So I try to explain to people why I like it here and it's, because it has that small town neighborhood feel, yeah. but we're all city people, you know? So it's not, like, you don't get the negatives of the small town. Yeah. <laughs> so you get like, you know, all the benefits while still having that kind of city person mentality. Yeah, right? I think definitely New West has, has done a very good job of that exactly, mm -hmm. and still keeping its historical, um, well, history, right? Yeah. I mean, there's just so many historical buildings the, that are still around, the right? The building we're in exactly. is one of the few that survived the Great Fire. Yes, so. I was reading about that. Yeah, yeah. and it and it doesn't. I, you can't look at it and say, "Wow, that's an old building," because mm. it definitely doesn't look that way. But you can tell that it's been here for quite some time. There's just so much story there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's <laughs> fantastic. If you had to deal with the electrical or the plumbing <laughs> in the building, you would know exactly how old it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I do because ours is right there too. Yeah. <laughs> so at that end, yes. Um, but initially, I didn't know, and I was like, "Wow, cool!" And then I found out it's not the greatest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, do you see uh, uh, how the community has built a relationship with um, the businesses, the Def local businesses? Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. There's a ton of community support to local businesses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That, yeah, I think that's great. I, I especially with these events here, mm -hmm. it's. I think it opens a door to to businesses coming out and 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 allowing for relationships to be built with the community, right? Yeah. Yeah. And as a member of BIA, do you also participate in like all the other events? Some of the events, yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, but it's not a requirement or anything like that. No, it's you no know, the no. because they, I couldn't imagine every business participating in every event. Right. Right. Yeah. But I mean, there's always an opportunity to participate in the events, and then we just kind of play it by ear and figure out what events are the best, you know, fit for us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the events, I'd like to participate more in them. I just don't, I don't know exactly how it makes sense to participate more. Yeah. Right? Like, bringing a bunch of video games to sell at an event that isn't really catered to video games doesn't make sense. Right. I can't really set up a portable escape room that kind of meets our standards and tech availability and things like that because there's not always electricity. And there's, right. there's a lot of, you know, so we tend to just kind of go to events and hang out and promote and talk to people and then oh, okay. give it a lot more promotional stuff to other people so okay, they yeah. can do the promoting. Yeah. So. But talking about portable escape room, so that yeah. you can do that. Yeah. I mean, theoretically, I could do that. You could do that. Yeah. But have you ever done that? Uh, I haven't, because like, like I said, I, our stuff is very high tech. It's yeah. all fully automated, super high tech. And to guarantee that we're going to have power, to guarantee that we're going to have complete control out of our environment mm -hmm. is, is difficult. Right? It's right. hard to set up a scenario and create immersion in an environment where you have a bunch of people eating at food trucks around you. <laughs> yeah. right? So I, I haven't figured out exactly what formula to put into that environment yeah. that, that meets my standards. 
Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get to the food because, you know, right. that's why we're here. So <laughs> let's bring on our sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> it's one sandwich. It's one sandwich. Okay. <laughs> well, definitely. I, I don't eat very much, so it, it's really mm. hard when I come to places like this because I want everything. And yeah. I'm like, I can't eat everything. <laughs> I'm like, I want that and I want that and I want that. That's I was actually cool. just saying, I wish we were in a position where... Uh, we could eat all of the food and then just our, let our bodies process it over the next week and a half or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, or even just buy the food and like just put it in the fridge, eat it in yeah. future days. But a lot of the stuff doesn't last that I long. I know. It, it, yeah, I'm definitely the worst, especially even when I go out to eat like at restaurants and I look at the menu and I, I'll order like 10 things and eat like one. <laughs> yeah. Do we know what sandwich this is? Is this I a mystery sandwich? I'm not sure actually. Do we know what sandwich this is? Do we know what sandwich this is? I don't know what sandwich it is. It kind of looks like a number four, but I haven't been into it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's dig it. That is very good. Yeah, that tastes like a number four. Yeah. I, I think it's a number four. <laughs> <laughs> that is very, very good. Well, we'll leave it at that. Continue to eat our sandwich. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me and being a part of, you know, the Food Truck Festival. Thank you. Thank you so much.